Hey guys, what's up people? Welcome to the session. I hope that all of you guys are doing good. My name is Anup and this is Vidantu. Welcome back. We are back with another VIP series. I know that a lot of you guys have been waiting for this for a long time. So today we'll be talking about convex uh, lenses problems. Just 10 questions. I'll give you 30 seconds quickly. Get your pens and papers and be ready to solve those 10 amazing questions. So make sure that you stick till the end. Solve each and every question because these questions are taken from your sample papers, from your previous year question papers as well. So make sure that you stay till the end and check out every Every single question as well if you haven't seen all the other VIP series make sure that you check out that as well it'll be there somewhere you know top right corner on the description just check it out you'll find the link over there right guys so convex lenses problem is what we're gonna talk about so let's begin with the very first question which is gonna be a simple one so make sure that you are you know ready with your pens and papers but before that is here is your quote for the day the two biggest enemies of our success are fear and doubt. You know, there's a saying that fear kills more people than uh, death itself. So whatever it is, guys, you are young right now. You guys are all, you know, you're basically in that budding stage, right? You guys are all starting to live your life right now. So whatever it is that you want to try, no matter how audacious, no matter how uh, crazy people think that idea is, it does not matter because it's your life and have the courage to you know try it out whether you fail or not that's secondary but try it out because you deserve a chance to you know try out whatever it is that you want to and this is the age that you do something with that something really bold that would uh, you know uh, push you into another level right so with that said people Let's uh, look into the homework rockers of the last session. This was the question, by the way, a ray of light falling normally on the surface of a transparent medium. What would be the angle of refraction? The answer is going to be zero degrees, people. If this is the surface of separation and a ray of light comes and falls exactly normal, that is it, uh, basically uh, normal to the surface, which means that it does uh, you know, incidenting at the normal itself. So the angle of incidence is also zero degrees because angle of incidence would be uh, the angle formed between the normal and the incident rate, which is zero degrees. So the angle of refraction would also be zero degrees itself because it will pass through undeviated. These are the homework workers. We have Smita, Kavi, Yogeshwari, uh, Inder, and Gauri as well. Awesome. Congratulations. If you want your name to be here next time, make sure that you type out the answer for today's uh, homework question which I'll be asking towards the end, right? So anyways, let's begin. Here's the first question. A beam of light is incident through a hole, through the holes of a side A and emerges out of the hole of the other face of the box as shown in the figure. Which of the following could be inside the box? Interesting question. Is it a concave lens, a convex lens, a rectangular glass lab or a prism? A beam of light is incident through the holes of a side A, the side A that you can see over here, and emerges out of the hole of the other face of the box as shown in the figure. Which of the following could be inside the box? A concave lens, a convex lens, a rectangular glass lamp, or a prism? The answer? It's the name of the topic itself, people. It's a convex lens. Why? Because if you have a convex lens that looks like this somewhere over here, you see this, the rays of light after refraction will basically uh, meet at the focus. So it looks something like this. You see this, the rays of light are converging at a particular point and that would be the focus of that particular lens over here. And again, those are the rays that is emerging out of it, right? So after refraction, they'll pass through that. So that's how it is gonna be here, people. Uh, I'm guessing that is, yeah, that is the answer. That will definitely be the answer. Convex lens would be the answer. I'm just thinking about the placement of the lens. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it is correct. It is pretty much correct. You can, you can imagine that, right? So a ray of light would come incident and would basically get refracted and pass through like that, right? So yeah, people, that is the answer for the first question. I hope you found that question interesting because I found that question a little challenging in the first time I, I read it. It was a little uh, difficult to understand the question. The answer is easy, but then uh, it was difficult to answer the question. Uh, understand the question. All right, second part of the question. It's from a sample paper. The question is this. What is the nature of the image formed by a convex lens? If the magnification produced by the convex lens is minus 0 0.5. Dun, dun, ta -dun. What do you think is the answer? Is it a virtual erect and diminished image? Is it real erect and diminished image? Is it real inverted and diminished image? Is it virtual inverted and diminished image? Now the first part of the question. Let's answer that. Minus 0 0.5, which is definitely less than 1. 
So that means that the image is definitely diminished. So that's the first part of the question. Let's answer that. So it can be either of the four options. That doesn't narrow it down. All right. Now, the sign says it's minus 0 0.5. That means that the image is inverted, right? If you remember your sign convention. So if you remember the sign convention, this is positive. This is negative, uh, positive and negative. So it's going to be inverted. And inverted images are always real images. Real images are always inverted. And hence, people, right answer would be option number three. Remember this that a uh, erect image is always for a virtual image whereas a inverted image is always for a real image and hence option three would be definitely the right answer to this question i hope you got this right people moving on to the third one that was just the warm-up questions all of these are the warm-up questions but once we get into the main ones make sure that you have your pens and papers so you have time to get your pens and papers ready and make sure that you're sitting in front of the computer with that right here's the third one the diagram shows the correct path of the ray after passing through a lens. Which of these diagrams show the uh, show the correct uh, ray of light passing through a particular lens? So you have the uh, convex lens again. So you have one ray of light that is passing through the optic center, one more which is parallel to the principal axis passing through the focus, passing through the focus and becoming parallel to the principal axis. And the other you can see that uh, passes through the focus, gets uh, refracted and then again passes through the uh, second focus as well. Which one do you think is the right answer? Uh, let me give you the options. You have, is it 2 and 3? That is the correct answer. Is it 1 and 2? That is the correct answer. Is it 1, 2 and 3? That is the correct answer. Or is it 1, 2 and 4? Let's take a look at this one, guys. This is definitely true because a ray of light passing through the optic center will pass through undeviated. The second one is also correct because a ray of light parallel to the principal axis after refraction will pass through the focus. The third one is also correct because a ray of light which is passing through the focus after refraction will become parallel to the principal axis. And the fourth one is definitely wrong. So the answer is one, two, and three. That would be the answer for this question, people. A simple, this uh, it, this is one of the most easiest questions that's ever going to be asked. And these are your standard incident rays as well. So do not tell me that you got those wrong, people. All right, moving on to the fourth question. Take a look at this fourth question, people. A convex lens of focal length of 10 centimeters placed at a distance of 12 centimeters from a wall. How far from the lens should an object be placed so that so as to form a real image on the wall? Options 30 centimeter, 60 centimeter, 12 centimeter, or 24 centimeter. Let's solve this. First of all, the focal length is given. Focal length. 10 centimeter, it's gonna be plus 10 centimeters because in a convex lens, the focal length is positive. The distance, the image is okay. The op, uh, a convex lens is uh, of a focal length 10 centimeters placed at a distance of 12 centimeters from a wall. So you can say that the image distance v is equal to 12 centimeter because from the from the lens 12 centimeter, okay, basically from the wall 12 centimeters apart, you have formed your you know placed the lens. How far from the lens should an object be placed so as to form a real image? So you're supposed to find out what is u over here. Simple. Remember the formula is 1 by V minus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F is the formula is your lens formula. 1 by 12 minus 1 by U is equal to 1 by 10. So I'll take U to the other side because it's negative. So 1 by 12 minus 1 by 10 is equal to 1 by U, which is 12, uh, sorry, 10 minus 12 divided by 120, which is equal to 1 by U, which is nothing but minus 2 by 120 which is equal to 1 by u. So u is equal to 120 divided by 2, 2, 6, 12, 0, 7, minus 60 centimeters. That is the answer, people. That would be definitely the answer for this question. So the answer is six minus uh, 60 centimeters. That would be your object distance. Right, people? So that is the answer for the next question as well. I hope you got this because you need to get this right right now. This is your point. This is the time. You're four months away from your exams. This is the time, people. This is the time for you to, you know, not make any more mistakes and put in a little bit more effort. If you haven't done it so far, this is the time for you to push yourself a little bit more because you're, you know, it's, it's very important. These four months is going to decide what is going to happen at the end of it. So make sure that you invest a little bit more time on your studies, right? Here's the next one. The fifth question from CBC 2020, 2010, uh, 10, so that's about 10 years ago, this question was asked. The question is, at what distance should an object be placed from a convex lens of focal length 18 centimeter to obtain an image of 24 centimeter from, from it on the other side, what will be the magnification produced in this case? So you're supposed to find out what is the 
object distance as well as the magnification your options are u is equal to 84 centimeters m is equal to 1 centimeter u is equal to minus 48 centimeter m is equal to 1 by 3 centimeter u is equal to minus 48 centimeter m is equal to minus 1 or uh, minus 1 by 2 u is equal to minus 72 centimeters and m is equal to minus 1 by 3 let's do it let's go ahead and do this people do it with me make sure that you're solving this question with me because it's very important it was a cbsc board exam question paper a very important one i know that you are capable of doing it but nonetheless don't take it easy people the more questions you solve the better it gets so make sure that you solve it with me right so let's go ahead Focal length is given as 18 centimeters. Now it's a convex lens, so it's going to be positive itself. To obtain an image at 24 centimeters, so V is given as 24 centimeters, it's going to be positive because it's behind the image is formed behind the mirror, right? Uh, behind the lens. What would be the magnification and what would be your object distance? Right. So you suppose what is U? So 1 by 24 minus 1 by U is equal to 1 by 18. So 1 by 24 minus 1 by 18 is equal to 1 by U. Uh, it's, I think uh, 24 into 3 is uh, uh, 72 if I'm not wrong. And 18 into 4 is 72. So uh, 3 minus 4 whole divided by 72 is equal to 1 by U. U is equal to 72 minus 72 centimeter because it'll be 72 minus divided by minus 1. So it'll be minus 72 centimeter. Now to find the magnification, it's quite simple. Magnification is what? Uh, v by U is the formula. V is nothing but uh, 24 and U is 72 minus, okay, right. Yeah, 24 minus 72. Huh. So 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 6, 2, uh, 2, 6, 2, 1, 2, 8, 16, 2, 3, 6, 2, 9, 18, 3, 1, 3, 3. So it'll be 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 would be the magnification. Am I right? Am I right? Yo, I am. U is equal to minus 32 centimeters and magnification is minus 1 by 3. That means that the image is a real image. It is inverted and it's also diminished as well. Beautiful guys. I hope you got this right. So the answer to this question, option number 4 would be the right answer for this question. All those who got it right, awesome. That's the end of the fifth question. Moving on to the sixth question. Here we go. Take a look at this one. If an object of 7 cm height is placed at a distance of 12 cm from that of a convex lens or focal length 8 cm, find the position and height of the image. The options V is equal to 12 cm, height of the image uh, is 14 cm, V is equal to 12 cm, H dash is equal to 7 cm, V is equal to 24, height is equal to 14, 24 and 12 cm. Let's do it. Guys. Let's, let's go ahead and do this. If an object of height, okay, height of the object is given as 7 cm. All right, that's out of the way. Is placed at a distance of 12 centimeter from the convex lens. So U is given as minus 12 centimeter because it's object distance. Object is always kept on the left hand side, so it's negative. The focal length is given as 8 centimeter. Find the position and the height of the image. So 1 by V minus 1, so minus uh, 1 by minus 12 is equal to 1 by 8 so that will be uh, 1 by v is equal to 1 by 8 uh, minus 1 by 12 because this this minus minus gets cancelled so it'll become plus basically uh, so when it goes to the other side it'll become minus again so that'll be 8 uh, sorry 12 minus 8 divided by 12 into 8 so that's uh, 4 divided by 12 into 8 4 to 8 so that'll be what uh, v is equal to v is equal to 24 because it's 1 by V, so V is equal to 24 uh, would be the, 24 centimeter would be the answer for V. Now to find the height of the image, now again the formula, people if you remember, M is equal to V by U, which is also equal to H dash by H is the formula. So you can use this particular formula to find out the answer for H dash. So V is given as 24, U is given as minus 12, which is equal to H dash. We do not know and H is nothing but 7. Uh, 12 to 24, uh, 7 into 2 is uh, 14. So minus 14 is equal to H dash. H dash equal to minus 14 or H dash. We can tell it as 14 centimeter. That's all people. I believe that is the right answer here. Yeah, 24 centimeters and minus 14 centimeters. So minus, that means it's inverted. So you can tell it as 14 centimeters, right? 14 centimeters because again, minus you shows that it's inverted. That is all it means, right? So that is the answer guys. Congratulations. All those who gave the right answer. Superbly well done. I am proud of you people. Seven, V is equal to 24 and H dash is equal to 14 centimeters. That is the answer for that question, right? Now, 
my question to all of you guys is are you people enjoying the session if you are give me a oh yeah in the chat box let's go let's go if you are people if you are enjoying the session and if you want to have more such amazing sessions and learn with some amazing teachers and gain 100% knowledge and have a possibility of scoring even 100% marks in your board exams click on the link that is given in the description as well as in the pinned comment section now, why is that so important first of all guys we at Vedantu are offering you unlimited live sessions you can take how many ever live sessions as you want there's no limit to how many number of sessions you want to take you can go with 10 20 30 40 how many ever sessions you want and each of those sessions trust me will be fun filled it'll be very interactive and more importantly you will have a ton of quizzes a ton of quizzes and those quizzes will help you to compete with the rest of the world and see how good you are in that particular subject so you actually have the opportunity to compete with your peers with your friends and see how good you are in that particular subject with this people even if you miss out a session don't worry we still can take the quiz or you can still take the quiz once the session is done even when you're watching the replay and check out the readerboards as well so in, in that that means that even if you miss out a session don't worry you can still take the quiz and check out the leaderboard and practice those same kind of questions n number of times you want and what more people with this unlimited live classes and more importantly those unlimited live sessions you can download every single handwritten note watch every single recording and get all the premium content of all those sessions all those unlimited sessions that you're attending you can get all of the things that is done inside the session i mean what more do you want everything at your fingertips on your dashboard with this i would say this is the best part because right now this is what you want inside the session you will not just have the master teacher but with the master teacher you'll also have the class teacher to help you clear every single doubt of yours so you never ever ever miss out on your doubts even if it's 50 doubts 100 doubts 200 doubts all of those doubts will be cleared inside the session itself people and those doubts will be answered by very you know what is a very capable teachers who will be there to clear your doubts at any point of time and yes guys you don't have to go in search of quizzes or in search of tests as well because you have a quality amount of tests and uh, assignments available to you and these questions are taken from your board exams from your previous exam previous question papers from your sample papers from every single source available uh, out there we are giving you the best of the best out there so you don't have to go in search of anything anywhere everything would be available to you at your fingertips itself and yes guys with that like a cherry on top of your ice cream 5000 plus micro courses and crash courses all for free you get so much more for a lot less the link is given in the description as well as in the pinned comment section for you to check out the link you can check it out if you want to and the coupon code is ame pro to avail your discounts nonetheless guys the seats are very limited it's filling up really soon so make sure that you click on the link and check out the link as well so here's the thing guys if you go for the one month program the base price of that is about 2500 rupees if you use the coupon code AME Pro, you get a flat 500 rupees discount and the price drops down to 2000 rupees. Now, if you go for the four month program that is under, not, not four, five month program that is until your June 21st, you know that your exams are starting from June, uh, May 4th. So even after your exams are started, we will be there with you to make sure that you're getting every single support you need. And if you go for that case, the base price of that is 7,000 rupees. If you use my coupon code AV Pro, you get a discount of, again, 1,000 rupees and the price drops down to 6,000 rupees. Now think about it, guys. In this one month duration, you would have attended about 200 sessions. That means that per session, you're paying about 10 rupees. And if you go for the uh, five month program per session you would have attended about 800 sessions in that four five months which means that per session you're paying about 7.5 rupees which is less than a packet of lace that you pay and have for 10 minutes this is for your own future again the link is given in the description as well in the uh, coupon code is ame pro right guys so that's it let's get back to the question that would be the end of the sixth question moving on to the seventh question guys we have only a couple of more questions left so here's the seventh one seventh question let's go ahead and do this one then the image of a candle flame placed at a distance of 45 centimeter from a convex lens is formed on the screen placed at a distance of 90 centimeters from that of a lens 
Calculate its focal length if the height of the flame is 2 cm and find the height of its image. Whoa! Alright, your options are F is equal to 15 cm, H dash is equal to 2 cm, F is equal to minus 20 cm, H dash is equal to 3 cm, F is equal to 30 cm, H dash is equal to 44 cm, F is equal to 15 cm and H dash is equal to 4 cm. Whoa! Alright, interesting question. Finally, something a little, you know, a little uh, thinking. Alright, this question was taken from your CBC 2013, uh, 2013 uh, question paper people. Make sure that you pause the video and read the question before you answer it. So the question is this, the image of a candle flame is placed at a distance of 45 centimeter. The image of a candle flame, all right. So V is given as 45 centimeter. From that of a convex uh, lens is formed of a screen. Wait, the image of a candle flame, please. okay, no. This is the object distance, sorry. This is the object distance, 45 is an object distance. 45 centimeters of convex lens is formed in a screen placed at a distance of from a convex lens is filmed uh, on a screen placed at a distance of 90 centimeters from the lens. Huh. I think V is equal to 90 centimeters. Right? So this will be minus 40 and this is 90 centimeters. The image of a candle flame placed at a distance of 45 candle flame placed at a distance of 45 centimeters. Found on the screen. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, U is definitely, yeah, this is great. U is 40, minus 45 centimeter and V is minus, uh, not minus, plus 90 centimeter. First of all, find the focal length. So 1 by V is 90 minus 1 by minus 45 uh, is equal to 1 by F. So, you know, find out the LCM. So this will be plus. So you can write this as 45 minus, sorry, plus 90 whole divided by 90 into 45 or okay try to complicate it 45 into 2 is uh, 90 so we can just write it as give me a second guys let me just erase this one out sometimes we all make blunders yeah so yeah uh, 45 into 9 so that is 1 plus 2 whole divided by 45 is equal to 1 by f so that's 3 uh, sorry 45 divided by 3 is equal to f f is equal to 45 divided by 3 which is nothing but wait a second did i make a mistake negative will get cancel will become plus no oh yeah uh 313 three, uh 3515 right so f is equal to 15 centimeters plus 15 centimeter i hope that is the correct answer let's see let's see all right now find the height of the image now to find out the height of the image you can basically use the same formula that is v minus u is equal to h dash by h so what is v v is nothing but 90 divided by 45 is equal to h dash by 2 2 centimeter so h dash is equal to 4 centimeter f is equal to 15 centimeter and yup that is okay no no i made a mistake i knew it all right so f is equal to 30 centimeters is what they got all right how 30 one second guys wait what did what did i do uh -huh. oh my god biggest blunder biggest blunder no? all right i put as 45 over here it should be 90 my god guys my god i'm so sorry Arre, arre, what a blunder. LCM, I got it right, but I did not write it as 90 over here. So it'll be 3 by 90, guys. Sorry, 3 by 90. So F, that is 1 by F. So F is equal to 90 by 3. That is 339. So yeah, 30 centimeter. Hey, blunder. All right, so you got the point, people. You got, you got it. I hope you got it right. I mean, I made a blunder over here. I put it as 45 into 2 because of my handwriting. I was not able to figure it out. My handwriting is very, very neat, people. So it happens. So let me just erase this one out. Let me just uh, make it as plus itself to avoid such confusion. So that it will be plus, right? That's it, right? Because it's minus into minus will become plus, right? So yeah, people, that is the answer. It'll be plus 30 and four centimeters. So the answer is option number three. With that said, let's move on to the eighth question again, taken from 2013 itself. The question is, this is a very interesting one. Probably one of the toughest questions. Not toughest, but it's a little confusing. So listen carefully. An object is placed on a meter scale at 8 centimeter mark was focused on a white screen placed at 92 centimeter mark. Using a converging lens placed at a lens a scale of 50 centimeter, find the focal length of the converging lens and find the position of the image formed in uh, if the object is shifted towards the lens of a position of 
29 centimeter whoa all right so let's try to solve this question first of all let's try to make a sense out of this question now th there's a meter scale at 8 centimeter the object is placed i'll just you know draw a candle or something all right wow, my candle turned out to be ha huh? now at 50th centimeter the the lens is placed all right convex lens is placed this is the lens right and at 92 centimeter there's a screen placed the screen placed all right so this is 8 centimeter this is 50 centimeter this is 92 centimeter first of all find the con con uh, find the focal length the options are f is equal to 21 centimeter uh, at in b is infinity f is 21 between f and c uh, f is equal to 18 at infinity f is equal to minus 18 centimeters and at focus all right so first thing is find out what is the object distance now the object distance u is equal to 8 minus 50 why because object distance is measured from the optic center on the principal axis from the center of the lens to the object so what is this distance this distance is 50 minus 8 so you'll get it as what minus 42 centimeter if i'm not wrong minus 42 centimeter now what is v v again is placed at 92 centimeter so what is this distance this is this is what is u right this distance from the center is what is v basically so 92 minus 50 okay all right huh. 92 minus 50 which is again going to be 40 uh 48 if i'm not wrong 48 centimeter not 48 uh four yeah 48 right 48 centimeter is not 48 no sorry 92 huh, 48 of you know 48 huh all right okay yeah 48 of you know how huh? why am i confused okay once again guys once again uh 12 get to not 48 uh, 42 that's what <coughs> simple subtraction yeah shame shame puppy shame all right once again guys once again that was unexpected. I got confused for a second. All right, so yeah, 42 centimeter is going to be your uh, your uh, image distance as well. That is the image distance as well. All right. Now to find the focal length, it'll be one by v. That is 42 uh, minus of minus will be plus one by 42 is equal to one by f. So two by 42 is equal to one by f. So f is equal to what? Two two four two one zero. So, so it'll be 21 centimeter that's your focal length focal length is going to be 21 centimeter now the question is if the position of the image formed if the okay find the position of the image formed if the object is shifted towards the length by a position of 29 centimeter if you were to move it to 29 centimeter 29 centimeter this is 29 centimeter find the position of the image formed if the object is shifted towards the lens at, by, at a position of huh, if, if that is 29 centimeters what is going to be the image distance is what they are asking so first of all find out the uh, distance so 50 uh, minus 29 10 uh, 1 4 so that's uh, 21 21 centimeter is the object distance so for the second part of the question object distance is 21 focal length is also 21 what will be the image distance guys think about it if the object is kept at the focus then the image is going to be formed at infinity so the answer will be at infinity itself i believe that is the answer uh yes it is formed at infinity and the of focus is 21 centimeter and yeah the image is going to be virtual it's going to be erect and it's going to be magnified as well right but they have not asked it so you don't have to find it out so that is the answer people it's f is equal to 21 centimeters and at infinity with that said this is your homework question for the day go ahead and try to solve this question let me know what is the answer in the comment section let's see who gets the answer the fastest the question is this a small object is so is so placed in okay a small object is so placed in front of the convex lens of 5 cm focal length that a virtual image is formed at a distance of 25 cm. Find the magnification. Alright, a small object is placed 
in front of a convex lens of 5 cm, focal length that a virtual image is formed at a distance of 25 cm, find the magnification. Let me know what is the answer in the comment section. That's it from my side, people. So in the next episode of VIP series, we'll be solving some concave lenses problem. So do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Do not forget to hit the like button as well. Thank you for joining. The link is given in the description and the coupon code is AV Pro people. Uh, if you want to uh, reach out to me personally, you can also reach out to me at anup.manoran at the rate vidanto.com. Thank you for joining. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great Sunday ahead. I'll see you guys soon. Take care guys. Bye-bye. See you all. Take care.